couple of weeks ago. The city said, hey, no problem. Want to have a scooter mm-hmm. in Chicago? Well, you just leave them wherever you want. You can rent them. Just get this app, and you can go, and you can ride around up to 15 miles an hour on a scooter that you're not trained on. Right. You can not wear a helmet. You can, uh, you're supposed to ride supposed in the street. the street, but people are on the sidewalks. They feel like, especially when you're going downhill, they're going much faster than 15, it feels like to me, when some people go zipping by. And they're supposed to be geofenced to the places that mm-hmm. uh, they cannot cross, and that did not happen Things either. Be they're all over the place. Yes. And uh, finally, you know, it is Chicago. And a fine Chicago attorney has decided to take up the case Good. because there are have been dozens of injuries on these scooters since they put them into place. Wow. I don't know why it was a good idea. I told them it wasn't a good idea. I told yep. the city. We had the city on this very program. And I said, this is dumb. Yep. Don't do this. And they're like, we're just going to see if we like it. Hmm. Well, you know who's going to like it? The plaintiff's attorneys. Brian Greening is co-founder of Legal Rideshare, and you guys do cabs and and uh, you know Uber and Lyft and stuff like that cases, and that's 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 a pretty big burgeoning business. But in terms of the scooters, how many cases have you caught so far? You know what I can say is that our phones are ringing regularly. Ever since the uh, pilot program started in Chicago, people are getting hurt and people are needing representation. <laughs> All right, now, so who, okay. so what kind of cases are you seeing? Are these people who want to sue the, 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 uh, someone on a scooter or the scooter company or the city because the scooter broke? What, what, what kind of things are we looking at here? They're all over the place. The uh, majority of calls that we do get are people who have hurt themselves on scooters. That seems to be the most common claim. Uh, truth be told, there's not much of a case there if you hurt yourself. Um, but we are getting calls as well about third parties who are being hurt by scooter riders, and that's really where our focus is. So, Brian, what you're saying, I would imagine if anybody unlocks a scooter using a Lyft or any other kind of app, there's probably a lot of fine print there that says we're not liable for anything that happens to you. And of course, nobody reads it, but it means they probably don't have a case. Is that what you're telling us? Yeah, the terms of service are pretty clear that when you decide that you're going to get on a scooter, if you hit a bump in the road and fall off, it's tough to say that the scooter company is responsible unless you can show that the scooter malfunctioned or that there was some glitch that caused your injury other than user error. Well, I, the glitch is that they're there. That's your first glitch. <laughs> the fact that, that somebody that thought that argument. was a, You should have gone to law school. I know. They, you're right. Your place. <laughs> this, there should have never been this in the first place. And there's a picture. I saw a story about, uh, about one of your clients. And, the, I mean, what happened to that dude? It, he looked like he face-planted <laughs> because he got hit by a scooter driver, right? Or a scooter rider. Well, it's a real sad story. So Al was leaving work uh, 5.30 on June 20th. He's going down the street in Wicker Park, uh, going with traffic, and a scooter rider comes in the opposite direction against traffic, hits him head on, and flees the scene. Uh, Al falls, and it, there's blood everywhere, and he's you know he's been dealing with the injuries and the damages ever since. So it, it's a, it, it really highlights the danger of these things on our city streets. So who are we going to sue first? Who do we sue? If we can't find the guy, right? We haven't been able to find the rider yet? Well, what we've actually done is we filed a petition for discovery uh, earlier this week, um, naming all 10 of the scooter companies and the city of Chicago, um, bringing them into court to provide location data uh, to try to pinpoint exactly which scooter and which scooter rider was in this place at this time and caused this injury. Is there some sort of tracking device with these scooters that would keep track of where they're at? I would think there'd be something, some sort of chip, because you'd want to recover one if it was stolen. Right, and you also know where they are because that's how you know where they're lot left. Yeah, right. They pick them up. And- they they do keep location data on each scooter, and the city, per the permitting requirements for the the pilot program, requires that location data be turned over upon request. So it's our belief that the city of Chicago can get this information if they want it, and that's why they're part of our petition. Oh, yeah. If you're out there, Scooter Man, you should just t- come in now of your own accord. <laughs> it's only going to get we, worse, Scooter Man. We hope that they do the right thing. We they hope should. that, that all this, uh, I mean, well, this press and, gets and, them in. And, Brian, I would imagine, too, you're probably looking into if there's any surveillance video, any cameras in the neighborhood that might have picked up uh, footage of this. Can you be charged with a crime here? You know, I, it's a hazy uh, area. Yeah. I think that in, an accident is an accident, but the crime here is that he left the scene. Right. You know, he, this could be equivalent to a hit and run where, you know, if you accidentally hit somebody when you're driving your car, that that's an accident. But when you leave the scene, it becomes a crime. And 
that is certainly on the table. If we can find out who this person is um, and the police are looking uh, for cooperation, I, I think that Al and I would certainly be right there with him. Yeah, it's like it's not like you didn't know. You could be driving a large vehicle and claim you didn't know you hit something. If you're in a scooter and you hit somebody, the guy knows he hit somebody. Yeah, and it wasn't a minor impact. You can tell that from the pictures. Al ended up on the ground, and, and the scene is really graphic. And there's surve- so, you say there's surveillance video of this. Uh, you know, there's there is not surveillance video that we've located so far. We've requested um, information from the city. Sometimes there are red light cameras, and they have pods that the that are up surveilling uh, certain areas. Uh, we've asked for any images that they may have of this event. Unfortunately, it was on a side street. It was Levitt and Crystal in the the Wicker Park area, um, so it doesn't seem likely that there would be any sort of you know, red light camera or yeah, ring or anything doorbell like though. That. Uh, you gotta get your ring doorbells. They're everywhere. That's true. That, yeah. that is true. That's a way to, that we could go. Yeah. You could go, you know, actually go, you could go ring the ring doorbells and you could see if there's anybody who kept their surveillance. For, uh, it's hard though, that, that far in the past. It is what it is. All right, well, good luck to you. I'm sure that the scooter cases are going to be mounting here. I, I had a prediction that by June, uh, July 15th that the city would suspend this program. And I still have right mm. now, as of this moment, i got six days to go. Yep. So. Well, I can tell you, we're, we're not anti-scooter. We like the idea of different avenues. Be careful who you speak for travel. here. Mm-hmm. I'm anti-scooter. Um, you know, when Uber and Lyft came to town, there were a lot of people who had a lot of problems with that. And I would say that overall, it's worked out pretty well. It's given um, our city a, a different mode of transportation. It's opened up the city to people who live in areas where transportation is not easily accessible. And scooters are doing the same thing. But with any new form of transit, with any new form of technology, there has to be regulation. And there has to be rules that are followed, because if you don't have those two things, then it's the Wild West, and and that's what we're seeing. Yeah, Brian, I also have to tell you that there's also a thing called winter in Chicago, Mm. and winter is coming, whether we like it or not. And this whole idea, it's cute, right, to have it in June and July, and maybe a little bit in August, September maybe, but, you know, get back and forth to Soldier Field. But, you know... Once the sleet and the you know the bad rains and all that, people aren't yeah. going to be able to. You can Black ride, ice. yeah, yeah. Be yeah awesome. be able to ride around on these things. Who, who, who are we kidding? So yeah. we're not the only city that has them. You know, they, they're in uh, Indianapolis. They've been in Cincinnati. So other cities are learning to deal with them, uh, and I think it's a it's a work in progress. Well, who, but somebody you know, got rid of them though already. There's one city that already killed the program. Wasn't that Austin? It, very, yeah, Austin, Texas. Yeah. yeah. Various cities have suspended programs, have said, look, look the hassle's worse than, than the benefit. Uh, but I do think that we owe it to the to the people to give it an opportunity. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Well, but, suing them will help. That's, the, that's a good way to get them to you know, continue yeah. on. But I, they, listen, the yeah. fact is that it's going to be a nuisance. The, the, all right, I give you Uber and Lyft. I even give you Divi. I don't like Divi. But I give you Divi because what Divi has done, Divi has created Diviots who get on the bike and then they somehow find themselves on the Kennedy Expressway. I don't know how they that got happens. there, but they, but it can happen. The scooter is because the at least the bike is a bike and it, the amount of damage, unless you get hit by a car, the amount of damage is you know fairly limited. But these scooters are fairly fast. And as you saw with your client, I mean, you know, people can really get hurt. So that's not a, it's not a good deal. All right. Well, good luck with your investigation. We'll see how this all pans out, and we'll see if they if uh, my prediction comes tr- true that by next Monday they suspend this program. We'll just have to see. Thanks so much, Brian. Thank well, you. We'll, yeah, we'll keep a lookout for it. Okay. Thanks. Legal rideshare.